today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. And um, yeah, so I just want to share with you today about identity. All right. So not only is identity important to become established as a Christian um, or as a believer that really walks with fruit. All right. But it's also important to be established in identity to be able to continue growing with more fruit. All right. But before we know who we are in relation to Jesus, it's even more vital that we know who Jesus is. All right. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says the following. He says, um, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, enduring the cross, despising the shame, and has sat at the right, has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So where are we running to? What is our eyes fixed upon? Or what is our eyes supposed to be fixed on? According to Hebrews 12 verse 2, it's supposed to be looking and focused on Jesus who is at the right hand of the Father. All right, That's where our focus should be. Oh, I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. I'm see How do I know that I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places? Because Colossians chapter 1 says that. Colossians 3 verse 1 says the following. He says, If then you were raised with Christ. So, I just want to say something here in terms of what Jesus, I mean, in terms of what Paul was referring to. He's referring to Romans chapter six that says, "If you have been, if you have died with Christ, you have also been risen with Him." All right, and he's talking about baptism and stuff like that, but he's talking about the fact of accepting the death of Jesus. Okay, because He died for what our sins. So the moment we receive that gift. It means that we die with him, which means then we are also raised with him. All right? He says, chapter 3, he says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind. Listen to what he says. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you die, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. All right. So here's the thing. He says that we are seated with Christ. If we die with him, we are risen with him. He says, but then we need to set our minds on it. Where he is seated at the right hand of the Father. Okay. So he says we are seated there, but we need to set our minds on it. In other words, we need to keep reminding ourselves. I'm with Jesus. I'm sitting with Jesus. I need to reaffirm my identity. I need to remind myself of my identity. Oh, Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. All right. But we know that he has his hand upon us. How do we know that? Because of Revelation chapter 1. So we are not only seated with him on the right hand, but he has his right hand upon us. In other words, the hand of the Lord is upon us. All right. And so it's important to remind us because he says in Colossians chapter 3, set your mind and keep it set on those things. All right. Hebrews chapter 12 says, looking unto Jesus, where he is seated at the right hand of the Father. In other words, keep your focus on where he is seated, where he is sitting and where you are sitting with him, according to Colossians chapter 3. All right. Just turn with me to Hebrews chapter 10. He says, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God from that time, waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering has he perfected forever those of who are being sanctified. Where are we being sanctified? In our minds. What do we need to do with our minds? We need to keep it set. On Jesus, who is seated at the right hand of the Father, where we are seated with Him, where He has His hand upon us, His right hand of power and authority on us. In other words, we have been given that power and authority according to Matthew chapter 27. All right, And He also says, and He makes intercession for us. All right, He continuously makes intercession for us. And so because of that, we can go boldly to the throne of grace to ask whatever we need.